Hey you guys, so there's a few things I want to uh, share with you today. Um, I don't know how to explain how this happens to me, but it's been happening to me since I was on the path. Like any time that the Holy Spirit wanted to make me take notice of what I was supposed to see. Um, it's like, it, I, I, there's no words for it. There's no words. The, the only thing, I, I used to say this to people, it would happen a lot to me on Facebook. Like there would be a meme that I would see and I may have seen this meme a million times, but this one day I would look at it and it was like, there was lights around it. Like, like lightning bolts going around it to make it stand out for me, like flashing like this, pay attention to this, pay attention to this. And I would pay attention to it and I would read it and I would, I would really think about it. And what would happen? It would cause a revelation in me. It would, it would actually cause me to shift. So this has been happening to me ever since I was thrown into the dark night of the soul. So this is exactly what happened to me today at church pastor was talking um in Matthew 10 but I got a few extra things now that I need to share with you that were shown to me okay and the other the other thing that I want to tell you that I learned from apostle um John Eckhart when I was doing his mass deliverance uh two more demons came out of me and um this time I knew exactly what demons they were because when he said it, um, it was uncontrollable vomiting, uncontrollable. And these two took me by surprise. I had no idea they were still here. One was the, the spirit of hatred. Now, I asked myself over and over again, am I feeling any hatred towards anyone? And I would constantly say no, because I, I guess I associated hatred with the feeling of rage. I guess maybe I don't understand what hatred is. Um, I would always say, no, there is no hatred here. And the other one was a spirit of abuse. See, I, I never heard these before. So I didn't understand that these were also demons, the demons of abuse. When, when he said these two things, the, the spirit of hatred and the spirit of abuse, uncontrollable vomiting happened. And normally what happens when, when I get these demons to, to come out, I start breathing out heavy. Like I would go, <sighs> like to push it out. And then I'll start coughing and then the vomiting will happen. This time it was just bam, all of a sudden uncontrollable vomiting. Okay. So I wanted you to understand that um, if you come from childhood abuse, you may have a spirit of hatred still in you. And you may have a spirit of abuse in you. I had never heard this before. Therefore, I had never rebuked them before. And they were still here. Okay? So, something for you to jot down. Especially if you were abused as a child. Um... Here's the other thing. See, the, the Lord is working on me to help me understand exactly what, what total surrender is to him. And, um, you know, when I first came back to the Bible and I started seeing these people casting out demons, um, it was, it was all about these mass deliverances with all these people there. And it was a big production, a uh, big show. People were yelling, get out, fire, fire. Um, I mean, just like screaming and yelling. Well, what I'm learning from Apostle Eckhart is, no, when you're truly in the spirit, you do not need to yell at these demons. Your presence enough is, uh, your presence is enough that these demons know who's speaking to them. That it is the Holy Spirit speaking to them. And they will leave. The, you notice, um, I think there was only one time where where Apostle Eckhart maybe even just raised his voice. He, he, and he, it wasn't what, I, what, I, what I've been seeing out here. Fire, fire, fire. 
uh, it's none of that. Um, and, and these demons came flying out of me. They came flying out of me. The other thing was, I did not see him. And if you watch that mass deliverance that I put up, it only has a picture of him. It doesn't actually show him in his church actually saying these prayers. It's only a still picture there. So I was thinking that I had to be watching these people and spiritually through these people, the Holy Spirit was going to tell these demons to get out of it. That's not it at all. Do you understand? Here, here's really what I'm, what I'm being shown right now. I'm still giving my power away to other people. Even though I fully understand that it's not these people doing anything. It is the Holy Spirit working here. I am still giving my power away. Thinking that I need other people to do this. And I think that this is exactly what Prophetess Maddie was, was speaking about the other day. And I said that Prophetess Maddie said that... Uh, Deliverance is not a ministry and that we can cast out our own demons, even the big ones. And uh, I think this is what she was talking about. I'm going to have to go inside on this a little bit more just to be sure. But I, I really believe that this is what she was speaking about. So Apostle Eckhart did not even raise his voice um, and, and people were being delivered. I certainly was. So there was the the uh, the spirits of hatred, which shocked me. It shocked me. Um, hatred and the spirit of abuse was still in here, came out. I think I'm up to 35 demons now. I, I'm just I'm just blown away. What I learned from Bob Larson was that the the more abuse we've been through, the more trauma that we've been through, the more demons we're going to have. Why? Because trauma is a portal for these demons. And then if you, if you were so unfortunate to have been studying Hinduism, uh, uh, in light of all of these demons that you had, especially if you've been abused your whole life, you've been in trauma your whole life, uh, Lord only knows how many demons are in here. Lord only knows. The only thing that I can tell you is I, 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 it just leaves me in, in, in a place of gratefulness and worship that, I, and I see more and more and more every day as these demons are being, uh, as I'm being delivered from these demons, I am, I am seeing every word in the Bible at what a sinner I am. Remember I told you when that person came on my page and told me to repent for my sins and I said, well, what do I, what do I have? To, what do I, what sin do I have? I was the victim of, of this abuse. Remember, I couldn't see any sin. I was in such a sleep. And uh, now I just cry. I, oh my God, I cry. I cry, I cry, I cry. How blessed and grateful I am that Jesus could even consider delivering me from these demons. I deserve everything I'm getting. Do you understand? When you can finally see this, you have nothing but gratitude for God. And you you know that you have no reason to have any ego about anything. Because you are nothing. You are nothing. And uh, it, it just makes me more humble. It makes me more grateful. Just, and it makes me see how blessed I am. I don't deserve any of this. I don't deserve any of this. And... I'm not beating myself up. I don't want you to I don't want you to get that demon of beating yourself up. That's not what I'm talking about. You see, we get to a place where we fully empty out of the ego. Um it, it's no more saying that that you're going to make a deal with God. God, if you do this, I won't do this anymore. Um uh, no, we, we don't we don't even have <laughs> It's so funny for me to even think about this. We have no right to say anything except thy will be done. That's it. That's it. And yet we think we're all that in a bag of chips and we're going to make a deal with God that if God does what we want, we'll do what he wants. Well, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. And this is why we, we all fall into all of this sin 
And then we got to work our way out. And what do we do? Then we go crawling to God. God, please help me. Please help me. Please help me. And I'm not making fun of anybody out here because this is exactly what happened to me. And yet I thought I was a Christian. And I thought uh, I had a good relationship with Jesus. And I brought Jesus with me to Hinduism. Um, I, I thought I had a good relationship here. Do you understand? This is what sleep is. This is what Satan wants you to believe. This is what every single one of us has to see. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some things from Matthew. And... Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so uh, we're going to start uh, Matthew 10, verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent out instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this is where I got, it's, it's ingrained in my heart that Jesus went to the lost. Do you understand? And um, I know this one little passage that he's telling them, don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the Samaritan, go only to the lost sheep of Israel. But at that time, there was no such things as uh, Christianity or, or, or anything like that. Um, what I would relate that to now, the lost sheep of Israel, um, I, I would relate that now to Christians who believe that they're really saved and they have this real relationship with Jesus, yet they're still living in their sinful life. I'm going to get to this. I'm going to give you supporting scripture of what I'm saying right now. So keep this in the back of your mind that uh, I'm not just uh, browbeating Christians here. What I'm saying is factually true. And everybody, if if your, your true goal is, is to, to want eternal life and go to heaven, you really need to start paying attention. Because I'm not out here browbeating Christians. I'm trying to wake you guys up. And why? Because I have been woken up. I have had to go the path. I have had to see all of my flaws and, and been shaken to my core to wake up. And I have lost everything. Do you understand? None of this was a pity party. This was, as I told you, I didn't set out to go look for God. God threw me in the dark night of the soul and said, this is where you're going. Now pay attention. And that was exactly what I did. Okay? So now I'm telling you, pay attention. If eternal life is what you want and you want to go to heaven and not hell, because trust me, Satan's out here lying to you, saying that all, all the cool people are going to hell and you're going to be having some, some big party down there. Oh, no, it's not a party. It's not a party. And hell is real. These people from these, these fake religions here just want to tell you there's no such thing as heaven and hell. Hell is, uh, is all in your mind and so is heaven. It's a mental thing. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. That's what they want you to believe. So that you will, you can still live a life of sin and you will never wake up. And what do you know? Satan's got another one. Satan's got another one. You, got, you guys got to pay attention. Verse 7. And proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Hear that again. You received without paying, give without pay. This was the other thing that, that got me to my heart. These people out here telling you that you needed to tithe, otherwise you fall under some curse. Um... Freely you receive, freely you give. It's a natural inclination. And what I, what I have understood now, understanding the entire universe, um, that any time that we do anything, it is, um, it is energy. We're using energy because we are spirit beings. Okay, so we're using energy and in the scientific community, um, it is called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is movement. Okay, so what I see as if you feel that um, 
somebody, even on the internet, somebody on the internet has helped you in your life. Um, and they have a ministry. They have uh, whatever, like some of these people you see out here. And you want to uh, support them by financially, then then that's very appropriate. It's very and how I see that is as an exchange of energy. Do you understand? Because money is just a tool. Money is just a tool. People put too much emphasis on money, and this is when you start worshiping money, and you're actually worshiping Mammon. It is the god of the devil of money. Okay. Um, no, we don't want to do that. Money is a tool that has been placed on this earth that we all need to live. This is what the big deal about is when you get the mark of the beast, that you're not going to be able to do anything unless you have that mark of the beast. Do you understand? So you all need to start breaking your attachment to money. It's one of the things of the world that we have to break our attachment to. Okay? And see money as a tool, no different than a hammer or a screwdriver or, or a knife to cut bread. It's a tool. That's all it is. You got to break your attachment to it. So what, how I see it is it's an exchange of energy. If somebody has put out their energy to meaning their time, effort, um, and ability to, to teach me something because nobody out here has to do anything to help anybody. Nobody has to do anything to help anybody. It's an exchange of energy. So if, if somebody has helped you in your life out here and you feel guided to financially support them, then it is totally appropriate. But for people out here telling you that if you don't tithe, you're going to get some kind of curse, uh, that's all of Satan. That's all I want to tell you. It's all of Satan. When there is so much emphasis put on money, it is totally of the world. It is no longer a tool. Now it has become an attachment. And it's also become a lifeline to people because some people out here are using it as a curse on you. If you don't tithe, you're, you're going to have something bad happen to you or God is not going to bless you. Whatever they're telling you out here, it's not the case. Not the case. Break your attachment to money um, and, and just see it as a tool. No different than a hammer. Honestly. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For the laborer deserves his food. And this is what I just said, actually. See, it's all supported here. It's what I just said. If you feel that the person that, that's laboring for you has helped you in some way, then here, here Jesus says, for the laborer deserves his food. Then it is all well and good. And, and it is proper that you support a person like that. Do you understand? But there, there's no saying how much you have to give or that you're going to be cursed if you don't give. This is the thing that I want to stress. And, and the reason why I stress this, it, it's, it's no, well, it's, it's multifold. You've got to break your attachment to everything of the world. Because the world is Satan's. The world is Satan's. You understand, we are children of God. We've been blessed the whole time. But because Satan had us with this veil over our eyes... We never understood this. This is why those of us who have been seriously abused, we're on a path and we're seeking. We call ourselves seekers. We're trying to find truth. We're trying to find God. God has been here the whole time. God has been here the whole time. It's hysterical when you finally wake up and you see it. The person that we were seeking has been watching us doing the seeking. Okay? There was another one. Um... Another saying that I heard, I don't know if it was St. Francis Assisi. I believe it was St. Francis Assisi that says, I was knocking on the door and I only, only when the door opened, I realized that I was knocking from the inside. 
Do you understand? Well, we say that when we usually knock on a door, we're on the outside and we want to be let in. This is what we think we're doing when we're seeking. We think we're looking for God and we're going to find God one day and, and our whole world is going to be beautiful and, and we're going to be like back in the Garden of Eden. And what, the truth is when we finally wake up, we understand that we were knocking on the door from the inside because God was here the whole time. God was here the whole time. And he was blessing us and protecting us throughout this entire search that we've been on. Because God knows our heart. Trust that. He knows our heart. So the laborer deserves his food. It's an exchange of energy. If a person takes their time, their energy, and does it from their heart out of love, they, they want to help you uh, find, find God, find the light, um, get out of the darkness, break Satan's chains off of you. There's only one way to get to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. And if people are, are out here, and uh, you've seen what I've been through, I've been brutally attacked out here, and Jesus also said, you will be persecuted in my name. And yeah, of course he knew what he was talking about. He himself was persecuted, okay? We come back out here anyways, and we do it all over again. Because it's not about the world. It's not about anybody out there who doesn't understand who we are and who's actually helping us. To, is this me saying these words? Nope, it's the Holy Spirit flowing through me. This is how I can come back out here every single day and not say, hey, I'm done with these people. Because if this was all about ego for me, I would have been devastated by the things that were saying out here. And instead, it was a constant pushback on me. Satan, get behind me. This is all I was saying. Satan, get behind me. Satan, you're a liar. Satan, get behind me. And I, I'd come right back out here. Do you understand? Yeah, we're coming up on that too. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I can't believe it sometimes. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. So what is this, what is this saying to you? If, if the house is worthy, if, if these are true believers of Christ that you walk into, they will also have this peace. You will, you will let your peace just, just flow openly. You're all flowing together in that same peace. If the house is not worthy, which means... They may say they're believers, they may be Bible thumpers, but they don't have that peace. They still have that inner conflict, that inner turmoil, that need to fight with people. Then you take your peace back because you can always go in that oneness space, no matter where you're at, okay? You can always go in that oneness space and have that peace. Let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, Shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. This is exactly what I experienced out here. Nobody would listen to anything I would say. I was being called a witch and a demon constantly because the people were in the sleep. They didn't understand what I was saying. And this is exactly what Jesus experienced. And why? It's because he was in the existential reality. There's only one truth. Here's the, here's the thing you all really have to understand. When we are in ego, when we are in the personhood, when we are in the world, the world is Satan's. Don't ever forget that. The world is Satan's. This is where, and we believe we are this individual person. We believe we are this form. We believe we are this psychological mind. We believe we are a, a man or a woman and our name is such and such. And this is all the lie. This is all the sleep of Satan. You heard me say the other day that God is the only real thing out here. And that is the truth. Because in the sleep, we all believe we're, we're these individuals. And you, once you wake up, you will see how hysterically funny that is. And um, so you, ha you have to understand that um, all, all the world is Satan's. And he wants to keep you in the sleep. These are all the things that we have to transcend. And 
it, it, it's not a it's not a matter and I don't want you to get this confused it's not a matter of we have to work to achieve salvation we have to work to achieve um, the status of being a child we, we were born that way we we're born that way the only time that that will ever be canceled out is if we make a conscious decision to follow Satan and we absolutely once we know God's word if we make a conscious decision that we're not going to follow God's word. Well, God will have a problem with that. Trust me. It's no different than you having a problem with your kids not listening to what your rules that you set down are. It's no different. It is no different. So if people don't want to listen to you, you know what? Yeah, this is what I do. Uh, you shake the dust off your feet and you move on your merry way. Now, I, I would not let anyone bully me out here. I would not let anyone abuse me out here. But trust me, as soon as the video was done, I didn't give these people a second thought. It did not upset my inner space. And I really mean that. Um, there are things that we have to do to not let anyone interfere with what we've been told we have to do in Christ. And I told you right from the beginning what the Holy Spirit told me that I have to do. And it's geared towards the mystics community and the occult. And this is what I have been steadily doing out here. Okay? So people don't want to listen to you. You can't make anybody listen to you. And um, these people think they know better than you. Okay? Go on your merry way. You don't have to listen to me. No, no one's forcing you to be here. Bye bye. You shake the dust off you, okay? Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Do you understand? The people who refuse to hear what someone who is who is residing in the existential reality has to say, um, they're going to be hugely surprised on the day of judgment because all these people think they're going to heaven. Sadly, they're going to get a huge shock. They're going to get a huge shock. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents. And innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. Flog you in their synagogues. These are people who have that spirit of religion about them. They don't want to hear anything that goes against their doctrine, their beliefs, their anything. They're not open to anything else. So when somebody like me comes, who has transcended religion and, and now I'm in the existential reality. They don't want, I'm a witch and a demon. I'm a witch and a demon. Well, God bless you. Surely wish you would have listened to me because uh, I won't be seeing you in heaven, but I tried. I tried. That's really all I can do is give people the truth. I cannot make anyone believe the truth. Okay. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you, what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Do you understand? There's no way any human being in, in the personhood in the world can know and can know the existential truth. There, there's, there's no way that that can happen. Let me say that again. There's no way that anyone in the sleep, anyone living in the world can ever know the existential truth. It does not happen. So this is what he's saying. You have to understand the apostles were not awake. They were not awake. They didn't even understand that um, 
what he said, they didn't even understand what he was saying when, when he said he was going to be uh, risen in three. No, none of them understood that. None of them understood it. There's only one, and I just came across it, was Peter. He said, he asked Peter, what are the people out there saying about who they who they think the uh, the Messiah is? And they were, they were naming uh, all different people that they had heard of previously. And then he said to, to Simon Peter, who do you think I am? And he said, you are the Christ. And Jesus said, no one would know that unless it came from my father. So Peter was one who was awake. You see? That's why nobody else knew it. Brother will deliver brother over to death. And the father, his child, and children will rise against parents to have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Do you understand? If, if I wasn't, if I didn't have some kind of calling to be out here to try to help you guys wake up and get away from these demons, then uh, why, why would I be subjecting myself to all of this abuse? You really have to think about this. And yet I'm still not here calling myself a guru, a pastor, a teacher, a nothing. Uh, there's still no PayPal link on my page. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. I'm just coming out here and sharing with you. Why do you think that is? Well, because everything I'm telling you is the truth. I have transcended the world. I am in the existential space. And there's no way that I could have known this existential space unless God was here. That's what I'm telling you. And this is why I'm being persecuted. Because the people in the sleep, these people um, at, at the religion level, they don't understand what I'm saying. So they're all calling me a false teacher, a demon, a witch, or this, or that. But a beep, but a bop, but a boop. Um, and, and they're the ones that are all out in the world. You see, they're going to get a big shock if they don't start listening. When they, persecute, when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. And this is the, the sin and uh, the one of the biggest telltale signs that a person is still in the sleep and still of the world when they are taking credit for casting out demons, when they are, are taking credit for healing somebody. Um, and, and they may speak the words Bible thumping that it's the Holy spirit flowing through them and doing this. They are just a vessel, um, but they don't truly believe it. And that's when the truth will come out. When they're, when they're in the heat of uh, a sermon and they're just going off, spouting out words, trying to get all excited, get the people excited, and then it comes out. How wonderful they are. How many people they've, they've delivered. They've delivered. You see, when, when something becomes truth to you and it's a true belief that you have in your heart, it's like, you don't have to be told what your name is any longer. You don't have to be told whether you're a man or a woman any longer. You know that. And you will never make a mistake on that. You understand what truth is and what belief is in people. If something is not truth or a belief in somebody, that's when these things will happen. And you will understand that they are still in the world and they are still under Satan's control. Okay? Okay. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So all these people saying that Jesus was working for Beelzebub, how much more will they, will they say that, that anyone who says that they're a follower of Jesus, how much more will, will we be called a demon and a witch? Got it? You understanding now? 
So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed. Nothing is covered that will not, and we've seen this play, God is so good, isn't he? Nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Amen. <laughs> what I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear, fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. You don't fear man. God has never given anyone uh, a spirit of fear that is purely demonic. It is a spirit of fear. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Hallelujah. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than, than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. And when he says that, I want you to understand and be very clear about this and let no demon out here lie to you. Anyone who purposefully tries to mislead you about what is being said in the Bible is exactly what he is saying here. That they are denying him before men. If they, if they are telling you it's right in the Bible that divination and tarot cards falls into divination. If they're out here telling you that the Bible is a liar, there's nothing wrong with tarot cards. They are denying Jesus Christ before men. This Bible is God's word. It is the sword of the spirit. These are the people that he's warning you about. And he will not acknowledge these people before the father. Understand that. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own households. Do you understand? Because we're all born into original sin. We're all born into, um, what's the word? Is it genetic? Generational, generational curses. We're all born into this and we're all born into the darkness. And normally, there is usually one person in a family that wakes up, and that person is made the scapegoat. And normally, we will have to leave everyone behind us when that happens. There are other families out here that people may be lukewarm Christians, and they, they may go to church on Sundays. They, they practice all the holidays or whatever of, of the Christian faith. Uh, they say Jesus is their Lord and Savior, but they're still out living their sinful lives. And if you are a person that has truly woken up uh, or are truly being called, you may have to leave your family behind. If your family does not want to stop living their sinful life, then you may have to leave these people behind. And it's these people that we love the most, we have the most attachment to. And he's going to go further on this. It's not in this one, so I'll say it right now. Jesus says, if, if you love your, your spouse more than you love him, you don't deserve him. If you love your children more than you love him, you don't deserve him. So why would he ever say that? We're, we're called to be married. We're called to have children. So why would he say that? Our love for God has to come first. And what is the primary reason for this? Well, number one, God is God. He wants to be worshipped. He wants to be worshipped. We are his children. It's whenever we, we think that we are the boss of our own life, we make the decisions. So we choose this partner that we're going to marry. Uh, we have these children. Um, I, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened with me because I never had a mother. 
Um, I, I made the promise at 10 years old that I was going to be the best mother in the whole world. What happened? I knew outright my whole entire life that I loved my children more than my own life. And I loved my children more than God. And I had said that many, many times. And it was my children that God removed from my life. Do you understand? Nothing comes before God. Nothing comes before God. Nothing. Because what actually happens when we actually can find our way into the heart space where God is and God does come first, everything pours out from that. And you are love. You are love. And you are able to, to truly give love to people. Not, not this worldly love with these attachments and, and these desires. And, and this is all Satan's world out here. Satan is the one who's telling you, love your children more than God. Who is God? Who does God think he is to tell you what, you what to do with your children? How much you should love your... This is all Satan's lies in your ears. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. This is what we have to keep telling ourselves. Because the world is Satan's. And until we fully wake up, we don't understand this. Okay? This is why all attachments must be broken. It doesn't mean that we have to kick our children to the curb, kick our wife to the curb. Nope. Just our attachments to these people. What does attachment actually mean? Does it mean that the way we feel about these people must change? No. No. But what it does mean is when, you, when your kid goes off to college and you have this empty nest syndrome, you won't have an empty nest syndrome. Your empty nest syndrome is that you think you are this person, you are of the world, and you're, you're, you're using your children to make you happy because you don't know God. and You don't know who you are in God. So you're using your children to make you happy. So when your children leave, you have this empty nest syndrome and you don't know what to do with yourself anymore. When you love God first, you see your children go off to college. That's a day to celebrate. Not celebrate that your kids are gone. It's a day to celebrate that they've moved on to the next chapter of their lives. And they're progressing as adults as they should. And now you have a new chapter in your life. Be excited about what the possibilities could bring. No, but instead we go into depression. We're sad. It's, it's, it's like we just buried somebody. And uh, this is why attachments have to be broken it is attachments that cause suffering it is attachments that cause suffering that's why everything i have told you out here was true and correct and it's something that every single one of us must do and so attachment just means that if something happened to the person you love something happened to your wife something happened to your children or your children leave or or you get divorced or something happens, you, your life is not going to be destroyed. Your life is not going to be destroyed. That means the attachment has been broken. You will not be devastated by anything being removed from your life because you are not attached to it. Okay? That's what it means. It doesn't mean you don't love the person. You don't love your wife. You don't love your child. Of course you love them. Of course, but it's a healthy love. It's a, one of the gurus that, that I used to follow said, calls it timeless love. Timeless means it comes from the existential space. It's, it's a true love to where you're not trying to uh, manipulate people. You're not trying to micromanage people. You want people to grow and blossom in Christ as much as they possibly can. And you understand that once that happened, Christ will be leading them. Christ will be guiding them. Christ will be protecting them. This is what we want for our wives, our husbands, and our children. It's what we want. The other is Satan's way that we have to have them here because without them, we can't focus. We can't live. We can't survive. This is what brings suffering. We've got to break all attachments. Okay? So, oh, it is here. Would you look at this? And a person's enemies will be those of his own households 
Whoever, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And now you understand why. Because we're still, we're still, uh, we're still a slave of Satan when we live that way. You understand? So we're not worthy of him. That's not how he has dictated that we live or that he has um, told us that we need to live. It's, it, we should be uh, in, in, in a state of peace, uh, a state of love, and a wishing well-being for everybody, and, and never in a place of fear, depression. All of this is darkness. Can you, can you feel that energy as I'm saying it? I can feel very bad. It, it's, it's a place of darkness, all of these things, and you know that it comes from Satan. So anyone who worships or, or loves their spouse, their mother, their children more than they love Jesus, not worthy of Jesus because we are still a slave to Satan. We are still a slave to the world. Okay? And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And I hear this a lot and people get this wrong, man. Take up his cross. You know, I hear a lot of people say that, um, that take up your cross means that that you're gonna you're gonna have problems and and you need to just not fall apart when you have problems. That's not what it means at all. What what what, what does being on the cross symbolize to everybody? What happened to Jesus when he was on the cross? Well, he was killed. That's what happened. You take up your cross, which means you kill this personhood. This is what I've been out here telling you from day one. You kill this personhood. You break all attachments and you break all desires of the form. You take up your cross. You crucify this, this, uh, this soul part of you that Satan has hijacked. You kill that. You kill it. You crucify that. You crucify it. You take up your cross. And that is the work that I've been out here telling you about. Breaking the attachments. Transcending the concepts. Knowing what the personhood is. Get rid of this selfishness. This I, 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 I. Get rid of this ego. Get, you got to transcend your religion. Because religion is man-made and it is here to keep the people in the sleep. Anything that is man-made was made in Satan's world. It is here to keep the people asleep. Religion is... If you know the Gospels, you know the Bible, and you are working on understanding and transcending the concepts, tr getting chopping down this ego, um, surrendering to Christ, all of this is happening, you can still go to church, you can still surround yourself with believers, and that's what we should do. That's what we should do. But here's the problem. People who are not reading the Bible, people who... Many Christians just go to church on Easter and Christmas. I have to tell you that. Many Christians just go to church on Easter and Christmas. Christians are in a lot of trouble. Christians are in a lot of trouble. And the others that go every Sunday, um, they don't pick up the Bible uh, any other time except when they're in church. Half of them don't even bring the Bible to church with them. It's at home on the, on the bookshelf collecting dust. Do you understand? Christians are in a lot of trouble. And because they said a prayer and walk around saying Jesus is my Lord and Savior does, and they have not changed their sinful ways, um, it, Satan will let them say it. Satan will let them say it. They're still going with him. You have to understand this. This is the truth. So whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Notice everything he's telling you in here. If you, if you love your mother or father or your children or your wife more than him, these are things that happen in the personhood. These are things that happen when we're unsure of who we are. We don't even give God the time of day except on Easter and Christmas. This is all because we're still slaves to Satan and Satan will remain quiet and will not bother us as long as he still has a hold of us. That's the truth. 
That is the truth. See how I'm being tormented now? Because this thing knows it's lost me forever. And it, I've, I've got to get to the point. I guess I haven't gotten there yet. I, I don't know why this thing hasn't left, to be honest with you. I don't know why. But the Lord will re reveal it to me when it's time. That much I do know. And I trust in his promises. I know this thing will go. Um, just when is it going to go? I don't know. There's got to be something still that I need to do. And that's why it hasn't gone yet. So that's where I'm looking. I'm not saying, well, well, God is not fulfilling his, his, uh, his truth that he left here. He's not fulfilling it. And, or, 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 or I'm not a real believer. I'm not a real Christian. No, there's something else that I have not seen yet. And we cannot see our own blind spots. So this is what I'm looking at right now. I'm continuously doing these um, deliverances. And like I said, I just found these uh, other spirits of, of hatred and abuse in here. Who knew? Who knew? So I'm constantly learning. So this is where I'm headed right now. Um, and no matter what has happened to me on this path, and a lot of very horrible things have happened to me, I've never once cursed God ever. I'm, I'm constantly thanking God because as I, as I said to you, there's over 30 something demons that, are, that have been casted out of me. And man, I deserve every last one of them. So can, can I, can I, do I have any space to complain? No, I sure don't. And I won't. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever finds his life will lose it. If you find your life in the world and you never transcend the world, you will lose eternal life. If you lose your life for Christ's sake, if you lose your worldly life, this personhood life, your life out and uh, your life being of the world, Chasing name and fame, chasing money. You understand all of these things are from the demonic realms. You're a slave to Satan still. Okay? So for, for anyone who loses his life will find it. So if you transcend the world, wake up, you, you will have eternal life. And now is the time to do it while you're in the form where you have the opportunity to transcend these things. Do you understand? Now is the time. Stop wasting time. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The Father. That's, that's the end goal. You don't get to the Father except through the Son. It doesn't say everything stops at the Son. You want to, the, the end goal is to get to the Father. You want to get to the Father through the Son. That's the end goal. And that is being in the existential reality is you know the Father. You know the Father. Okay? The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple Truly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. And understand those words right there. There is a possibility that when we are graced with rewards, we can lose these rewards. Do you understand? Otherwise, those words would not be there. He will by no means lose his reward. There is a possibility to lose the reward. The, the next chapter was chapter 16. I just got to find where I wanted to read it. Oh, this is where he said to Simon Peter. Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. When you are awake, 
and you are you are in the existential reality you satan did not get you there only the father gets you there okay and i tell you you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it Here's what I want to what I want to show you. From the, this is uh, verse 21, chapter 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and and began to rebuke him, saying, "Far be it from you, Lord! This shall never happen to you." But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up your cross. Die to yourself. Why did he say to Peter? After he just told Peter that you're, being of the world, you would, you would have never known that I was, I was Christ. Um, only God could have allowed you to see this. The Father could have allowed you. And now he's telling Peter, get behind me, Satan. Why did he say that? He said to Peter, you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And on the things of man means of the world, selfishness, not being able to see the bigger picture, ego, sleep. All of this, it's all in Satan's world. It's all Satan's world. So, uh, Peter obviously knew that Jesus was the Christ and loved him very much. Uh, didn't want him to ever think that he would die or be crucified. He knew back in those days the crucifixion was what they did and it was excruciatingly painful. And Peter did not want to ever think of Jesus going through that. And so the human aspect took over him, his, um, his fear, his um, selfishness. He, he, did not want, he did not want to lose Jesus. He did not want to. Was it really about Jesus being tortured on the cross? Or was it the fact that he did not want to lose Jesus? This is what Jesus told him. Get behind me, Satan. Because this is being in the personhood in the world and of the world and the world belongs to satan this is everything i've been telling you guys out here this is everything i've been telling you guys so please hear me loud and clear everything i'm saying is in this bible and jesus has told everybody using different words Jesus always spoke in parables to try to explain things to people. He used different words, but what he told everybody, you must die to yourself, meaning you must get rid of the ego. You must get rid of the personhood because as long as you have that, you are a servant of Satan and you are not worthy to be a servant of him. Okay, I will leave this here. And um, I hope you all have a blessed day.